Thank you everyone for tuning in and continuing the conversation of MMA. We're going to be going over, did Tom Aspinall not get enough promotion from the UFC? According to Ariel Hawani, we have Islam Makachev's injury, how that will be affecting his next fight. Then we're going to be going over Umar Nurmagomedov versus Corey Sanhagen, Umar's plans and Corey's plans for potentially what they will do after they win the fight. So with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. Real Hawani believes the UFC is not doing enough to promote Tom Aspinall. The guy is a dream. He is a dream. He, he is a family man. He doesn't disrespect the company. He doesn't embarrass the company, all this stuff. And 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 every time he talks about the heavyweight division, he goes on a rant about John Jones. At least this time he didn't go on a rant about John Jones. But uh, it, it blows my mind that they're not really getting behind him in, in the ways that I think they should get behind him. Um, they've got something very special, and he's the best heavyweight in the world. And I don't even think it's like a debate. I don't even think that's a hot take. I don't even think that's like a crazy statement. He is the best heavyweight in the world, in my opinion. And that interim belt is a hell of a lot more real than John's belt, if you ask me. Buzz Brands offers a wide variety of high quality, low cost, and low dose THC options. It's made for the functional person who uses THC, whether it's to enhance life, for pain, or for mood. They have energy drinks, my personal favorite, gummy shots, and ice creams, guys. Whenever you make a purchase, enter Bear in the Notes. On August 25th, I'll pick two or three of y'all, and we'll send y'all a huge care package of random items from Buzz Brands, guys. That's buckabuzz.com. Enter Bear in the Notes. Let's get back to the show. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it right there. What an awesome, awesome take from Ariel. I think so. I was kind of thinking about that too. It's like, man, you have like the world's most badass guy, right? Because that is the heavyweight champion. UFC is the badass organization out of all the MMA organizations. So Aspinall is the active champion. And if you're saying no, John Jones, because the interim versus regular, well, Tom Aspinall just defended his interim belt. So he is the active heavyweight champion. For some reason, they don't want to call it the championship. They just want to call it the interim championship belt with Aspinall because Dana White wants to keep Tom, I mean, uh, freaking John Jones up here on the pedestal as the baddest man in the world. When what? Okay, yes, he is the GOAT of MMA, but it is for his light heavyweight pedigree from like four years ago and beyond. That was like his last fight in light heavyweight was four years ago, right? Then he fought Serial Gone in heavyweight. Wasn't really a fight. Chokes him out first round. Hasn't done anything in heavyweight. Tom Aspinall has been murking contenders, murking title, uh, uh, previous title contenders. He had freaking just finished Curtis Blades. Everyone he touches goes to sleep, guys. And he is fighting heavyweights. He is staying active right now. John Jones is not the most dangerous man in the world. It is Tom Aspinall, but it is so funny because the UFC has this super, like what Ariel said, this super likable guy. He is, in my opinion, the most dangerous heavyweight in the moment. My wife and I were just talking about this last night, but it's like the UFC isn't catapulting this dude. And I feel like this is the best dude to catapult, right? And they're just so concerned with John Jones. But my thing is, John Jones is scared to fight Tom Aspinall. We already know this. He wants to fight Stipe, who's like four years retired, coming off a loss from Nganu. Everyone who thinks that Nganu's the world's baddest man, he's not. When was his last heavyweight fight? In, in MMA. In the PFL, right? Because he went to the PFL to fight uh, boxing and heavyweight. So when was that MMA heavyweight fight? In the no one. Okay, so he literally, to me, he's a retired heavyweight guy. And then he got knocked out by Anthony Joshua. Nganu is not the world's scariest man. John Jones would have eaten and still would eat Nganu. And I believe Aspinall finishes Nganu and finishes Jones, but he will finish Nganu a hell of a lot faster than he finishes Jones, guys. And uh, so with that, let's go ahead and see about Islam Makachev's broken wrist. We have Islam Makachev reveals that he has a partial ligament tear in his hand. He's unsure when he'll be able to return. Islam said, after the fight, my fist hurt a lot. A lot of things hurt. We'll take time. Everything is healing little by little, but my hand continues to bother me. An MRI recently confirmed that I have a partial ligament tear. Let's see if I can recover. If not, I may even have to have surgery. On his return, he continued, well, it's questionable. We haven't talked about the fight yet. I am doing rehabilitation every day now and we'll see how the hand goes. I really want to perform before the end of the year. I plan to too. So far I haven't even thought about not performing. But I want to come in shape, prepared, so that nothing bothers me. Before the last fight, there were also a lot of minor injuries. Everything accumulated and I want to give my body time to recover. Sean O'Malley. 
man, that's interesting too. Islam has never came out and said that before. So before his last fight with Poirier in UFC 302, he had a little bit of injuries. But as you know on this channel, we say it all the time, everyone's injured during fight camp. And I'd be impressed if you just had one minor injury and not multiple, right? And so with that, Islam saying he wants to fight at the end of this year. Who do you think he's going to fight? I'm hoping it's Armand Sarukian. Obviously, Armand is taking his time. He's going to have a full camp this time, preparing for the champion and their rematch, guys. I cannot wait for that rematch. Who do you think is going to win? Do you think Islam has it, or do you think Armand has it? And what do you think what it does like um, to the psychology of the Poirier versus Islam fight to Islam specifically? Everyone just saw Islam got made look like a freaking human being. He also was made look like a human being on the first fight with Alexander Volkanovsky. This guy isn't like killing everyone like Khabib did. Okay, he's human. He can't be touched. He can get hurt. He has been knocked out before. That's his only loss on his record. So will this give Armand Sarukian like a new sense of confidence? That's what I'm thinking. Because also like in Islam and his head, he's like, dude, like if Poirier just did this to me, what is this guy going to do? You know, you know, they... On Armand's first fight in the UFC, it was with Islam on a short notice, not a full fight camp, and it was so incredibly close. It was the closest fight Islam has ever, ever had, except for when he lost to Volkanovski, and then obviously now to Dustin Poirier, because there were some moments, man, when Dustin almost had it. But I am so excited that Islam is not seriously hurt and that he's fighting again this year. So now we're going to go over into another video. We're going to go over... Umar Nurmagomedov, speaking of those uh, uh, family adjacent, uh, he is fighting Corey Sanhagen, and I believe this is going to be not like a number one contenders, but whoever wins this fight is fighting for a title, and uh, I am pretty excited to see this Umar guy moving up the ranks. Obviously, he's been calling to fight Sean O'Malley for a long time, which that would be an awesome fight. His name just had to get a little bit bigger, and he had to build up the ranks, and I believe with an impressive win, over Corey Sanhagen, we'll be seeing him fighting O'Malley after he beats Marab. But let's take a look at Umar Nurmagomedov reveals plan after Corey Sanhagen fight. Leading up to this weekend's clash between Corey Sanhagen and Umar Nurmagomedov, the expectation is that the winner of this fight will wind up competing against the winner of the upcoming title fight between Sean O'Malley and Marab Devashvili sometime next year. According to Nurmagomedov, who spoke in an interview with MMA Junkie this week, he's been told by the UFC that with a victory over Corey Sanhagen, he's next in line for a crack at the title. While discussing his fight with Sanhagen, he compared the number one contender fight to how Sean O'Malley got a fight with a top-ranked opponent in Peter Yan before getting his crack at the title. When they give me good opportunity, everyone beginning cry. I don't know why. Yeah, um, I mean, I think if you, you win, you could definitely deserve it. Sean, beat, Sean was number, I think, 11 when he beat Peter Yan, and then he got the title Sean after, too. Same situation. I will, I will fight next one, Sean. I will fight. I think they said I will fight. Who, gonna, who, who will win? He will fight. Okay, UFC told you that. Yes. Umar also revealed that Habib Nurmagomedov will be in his corner for the fight on Saturday after the Eagle cornered Islam Makhachev against Dustin Poirier back in June. While he previously said that he wouldn't be cornering again, it sounds like Habib Nurmagomedov may have had a change of heart. Up next, let's take a look at... Is Khabib just cornering because he's running away from Russia and he's bored? I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But guys, man, that brings a smile to my face seeing Khabib cornering again. I would love, 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 love to see more and more Khabib, guys. He left the sport way too soon, had so many unfinished things to do, but you know what? I respect his mindset. I respect his religion. And I also respect the promise he made to his mother, and uh, that is one thing you have to, like, take your—I salute. I take my hat off to you, Khabib, man. You are an honorable person that keeps his word, but we do miss you here in the MMA fight world. So it is so cool to see you cornering. And uh, hopefully we see more of it and then maybe one day like an expedition fight or some sparring or, or something like that. But uh, anyways, getting into this, what do y'all think is going to happen here? Corey Sanhagen, or do you think Umar is going to win this? I'm going to go for Umar. He's got all the weight on his shoulders. He's up and coming, the newest prospect. Like you said, it's the same situation with the O'Malley and Peter Yan fight. And I believe if this guy does win, he will be fighting Sean O'Malley because I think there's no way that Marab submits O'Malley. And I think that there's no way Marab can stand a punch from Sean O'Malley sniping him, guys. If he got dropped by Henry Cejudo, Peter Young, he's going to get murked by Sean O'Malley, guys. It just is what it is. 
Marab does not have a chin. Sean O'Malley is that guy to punch you in the freaking chin the second you go for a takedown. He is so accurate, and we've already seen it happen with uh, Aljamain Sterling. I knew Aljo was going to beat Sean. It didn't happen. I also knew that Peter Yawn, I thought Peter Yawn was going to murk Sean. Didn't happen. And uh, so now, guys, I'm convinced, and uh, th there's no way in hell Marab's winning, right? And so I cannot wait to see Umar Nurmagomedov versus Sean O'Malley. I think that would be an amazing, an amazing fight. And uh, they both have two similar body types. We got, yes, is he, you know, he has his grappling and, you know, ground dominant also, but his kickboxing is, you know, it, it, it's okay. It's okay, man. And uh, it's getting better and better every single day. I know when Corey uh, Sanhagen was getting asked about Umar Nurmagomedov, they were only talking about Umar being, uh, being a threat on the ground. But it's like, guys, he is training with freaking Khabib, you know what I mean? And Islam and all these guys, like, he is getting better every single day. I guarantee you, Umar Nurmagomedov is going to be a threat on the ground and standing. And the longer he's in his career, the more fights he has, the better he is going to get, guys. Think about Islam striking and Khabib striking. That is one area in the world where they can develop striking that works with their wrestling and ground game dominance, guys. So with that... I'm leaving it here. If you got any entertainment, ugh, I can't talk today. If you got any entertainment out of this video, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. September 1st, I'm going to go through my subscribers, send a random one of y'all a pack, Pro V1 golf balls. I'll even like embroider like your YouTube handle name. If you're over 21 and you don't like golfing, I'll send you some stuff from buckabuzz.com, some energy drinks, you know, edibles and uh, shots like that. I'm leaving it there. I'm out. Peace.